Pretend you're a wild animal. Where would you live? In a forest? A wetland? A desert? Or a grassland? Wherever you live, biologists call it a habitat. A habitat is made up of four things that all animals need. Food, water, shelter, and space. When an animal lives in a place that has the right amount of all these things, then it's living in a healthy habitat. Let's take a closer look. Food, water, shelter, and space. First three are pretty easy to understand, right? You have to eat, drink, and have a place to stay. But what about space? Do you need space? <laughs> we all need space, although some of us require more than others. A spider would only need a small area to build a web, maybe in your backyard. But what about a cougar? It requires a lot more space than a spider, even as much as 120 square miles. This desert has a lot of space, but very little water. In fact, for an area to be considered a desert, it must have less than 10 inches of moisture a year. This affects the kinds of plants that can grow here, which in turn affects the types of animals that can adapt to living in a desert. Plants that have adapted to desert life by altering their physical structure are called xerophytes. They usually have a special way of storing water, like this cactus that collects water in its fat stem. Some other desert shrubs have also adapted by reducing the size of their leaves to eliminate transpiration, which means the loss of water to the air. Desert wildlife is also adapted. Many animals avoid the heat of midday and only become active at dusk and dawn. These animals are said to be crepuscular. A good example of a crepuscular reptile is the rattlesnake. Some desert animals, like this bat, Yikes. go one step farther and only come out in the cool temperatures of the dark night. These are called nocturnal animals. Others live in burrows beneath the soil to escape high temperatures at the desert surface. And above it all soar the birds of prey. They feed on the small mammals when they emerge from the ground. All have adapted to extreme temperatures and very little water. Wetlands, on the other hand, have lots of water for at least part of the year. Water drives the other two things that define a wetland, hydrophytes and hydric soil. Hydro means water. Phytes is the word for plants. Hydrophytes, like this cattail, are plants that have adapted to wet conditions. These don't suffocate or rot in water-soaked or hydric soil. That soil is composed of organic materials, plants that have died and built up without breaking down like they do in drier soils. These soils work like giant sponges, absorbing water during floods. The plants improve water quality by trapping pollutants and soaking up nutrients from animal waste and farm fertilizer. Wetlands provide food, water, shelter, and space for birds like ducks and shorebirds. They're also important stopover places for migrating birds like these snow geese stopping in Idaho on their way to nesting grounds farther north. Remember our desert habitat? Some of the less obvious wetlands are places like this, the thin green lines that wind through the deserts. This narrow strip of relatively lush vegetation is the lifeblood of Idaho's desert wildlife. Bighorn sheep, frogs, antelopes, songbirds, and other species depend on these critical wetlands to survive. Forests combine some of the characteristics of wetlands and deserts. Rainforests have lots of water. Other forests are dry. Here in Idaho, the forests of the Panhandle, called boreal forests, are very wet. But the forests in other parts of the state are dry or temperate forests. The tall trees in a forest are called the overstory. The wind spreads their seeds and pollen. 
The understory, the shrubs and grasses beneath the tall trees, are designed to grow in shade. There's usually less wind in the understory, so these plants have adapted by using animals to disperse their seeds. In a temperate forest, precipitation may fall throughout the year. However, during the winter, moisture is less available because it's frozen. Animals that live in this type of forest must be able to tolerate hot summers and adjust to cold winters by either hibernating, migrating, or keeping active. Hibernation gets black bears through the winter. They fatten up during the warm months on insects and berries, then hibernate when food is scarce. When grasses and shrubs become buried in snow, many animals, like deer and elk, migrate from mountains to lower elevations where food is more available. If a forest animal does not hibernate or migrate, it must stay active to survive the cold. This wolverine remains in the high country but spends the winter feeding on dead animals, often the deer and elk that don't survive the harsh weather. In boreal forests, the summers are wet and cool. Dead plants decompose slowly, creating the same hydric soils that are found in wetlands. Animals like this moose have adapted to this wet, cool climate. In the summer, moose can be found feeding on the aquatic vegetation in ponds and marshes tucked into the forests. During the cold, wet winters, they eat willows and shrubs. Their long legs make it possible for moose to reach the tall branches, and their black coat absorbs the warming rays of the sun. So what is a grassland? Like a forest, grasslands can be either wet or dry. In Idaho, our grasslands are in the north, near Moscow. This area is called the Palouse. It's one of the most endangered ecosystems in the United States. Only 1% remains. This area is rich in volcanic soils, which make good farmland. So when white settlers arrived, the native plants were plowed up to sow wheat. Summers and winters are mild in our grasslands. The rainfall is evenly distributed throughout the year. That means it's just as wet in the summer as the winter. Because of that, the plants don't need the long tap roots desert plants need to reach water. And what are grassland plants? Grasses, of course, plus special wildflowers like camas. Grasslands can be blustery places because there are not many trees to slow the wind. The long, narrow leaves of the grasses helps reduce evaporation by the wind. Wildlife that lives in grasslands often seek shelter in the ground. No trees, right? Animals like pocket gophers, skunks, and red foxes are adapted to burrow into the ground. So if you were a wild animal, where would you live? In a forest, a wetland, desert, or grassland? <laughs>